Hey everyone, this is Neil from the Overclocker magazine. So today I'm bringing you a review on the B550 Aorus Pro from Gigabyte. So this motherboard is $189 or locally looking around 4,400 Rand. At least that's the last time I, uh, I checked. And for that kind of money, you actually do get a, a fairly decent motherboard. In fact, there are motherboards that cost so much more than this one, but actually don't have the DRAM frequency support this one has. And this is a particular thing that's important to me. Compared to all the other vendors, they've certified the most number of boards with very high DRAM capabilities. And the thing is, it's not just theory because it actually is in the QVL. I think the Crucial Ballistics DRAM that's rated for 5100 and 5200 uh, MT is a second actually in the QVL. So if you are able to get hold of such a kit, this motherboard actually supports it. And in support of the claims that Gigabyte is making about the DRAM frequency capabilities on this board, I was actually able to get my B die kit to do 4800. Obviously not stable, but bench stable. And I wasn't able to do this on any other B550 motherboard. Kudos to Gigabyte for having done such an excellent job on the memory tuning just over the latest generation of motherboards but more specifically about this one so as you can see this is a fairly plain looking motherboard i mean when it is on the only thing that you will see that goes on in terms of uh rgb or lighting there's an actual strip here you should be able to see it in the video there's a strip here that turns on that's about the only rgb feature that you're getting in terms of audio it's nothing that you haven't seen before so what you have is the realtek lc1220 with Wima audio capacitors and Nichicon fine gold capacitors as well. Okay, so this motherboard supports only two M.2 sockets. So this one is obviously wired to the south to the chipset. And this one is wired to the CPU. So this is PCI Express 4.0 capable and this one obviously is not capable of that. So you have six USB here, some of which I think uh, port number five, four and three become disabled if you populate this slot or any one of them this board actually works for me i like its simplicity i really do like its simplicity i do lament the fact that there isn't a, a postcode led here what gigabyte has instead are these i'm not sure if you can actually see these are these four leds here that in that turn on indicating whether the system is going through cpu testing dram uh, or booting or testing your vga during the post process and in lieu of a uh, debug LED, yeah, I would rather have this than nothing at all. Regarding power delivery here, so this is a 12 plus two phase uh, power, uh, power system. I think it uses uh, 50 amp power stages. This power uh, delivery mechanism can deliver up to 700 amps of power, which is more than plentiful for any sort of overclocking you might wanna do. Gigabyte has made some huge improvements in the BIOS or the UEFI, right? Uh, over the years, they've been improving it slowly. There are some things that are a bit annoying that they still have there, but the ability to set your own favorites very quickly and very conveniently is one of the things I like about this, and this is present on this board as well. What else this board has is a visual representation of what load line calibration looks like for gigabyte motherboards. It's still got that crazy thing of it's got auto, normal, standard, ultra ultra extreme and all sorts of things that are actually difficult and synonymous with each other however gigabyte has added a visual indicator for whatever load line calibration system that you are using i mean this overclocking on this motherboard is so easy it's just literally so easy the thing that makes it fun is, are the options for dram tweaking for 24 7 use you're obviously looking at something like 4600 or maybe even 4400 but given that this is a AMD platform, I mean, what is the point of that, right? You're going to get stuck at 3800, optimally at least, and basically that's where you want to be. And even at 3800, uh, MT is a second, obviously the memory performance is good. And yeah, the Infinity Fabric is running at its maximum. The CPU that I used for testing this, the Infinity Fabric could only go up to 3733. However, I do know of other CPUs that can do 30, uh, excuse me, that can do 1900. So this is just CPU dependent. But overall, this motherboard is definitely competent when it comes to overclocking. And obviously the performance that it gives you is just phenomenal. Uh, talking further again about memory, as that's what I find appealing about this, I was able to run seriously tight timings on this memory despite the high frequency. So, Again, I'm thoroughly impressed by what Gigabyte has been able to do 
with their memory overclocking and tuning in general in, with this generation of motherboards. So Gigabyte has also added something pretty neat here. They have this uh, QFlash Plus. So I'm not sure when they started adding this. Is it the last generation? I actually can't remember, but you're able to flash your BIOS without having a CPU inserted. There's another vendor, of course, that's had this ability. I think Asus had this ability for quite a while, but it is something that I'm new to on Gigabyte boards and I actually do appreciate it. In terms of performance, this motherboard actually outperformed all the other B550 boards that I tested. So not only does it overclock memory really well, it really is a performing motherboard. The reason it was able to outperform all the other ones, I think is just down to how tight the memory uh, settings are. Just by default, when I load XMP, so the auto rules for the boards are give better performance than the others. And even when overclocked, I was able to really tighten the memory and get higher frequencies than I could on the other boards. So just because of that alone and the pricing, I think this is a more than fair ask at the going rate. I mean, if I were to build a performance rig, yeah, I would definitely start here, particularly because I care about memory overclocking. And if I were trying to maximize uh, performance on my AMD platform, I would definitely look at the P550 Aorus Pro. If you like this content, if you have any opinion on this motherboard, if you have any questions or things like that, leave them in the comments section. In the meantime, take a look at the benchmarks and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.